exciting thing to watch TC Tech do. We do four to five every month, and uh, it adds up over over a period of time. We do it every month for eight years, and uh, so essentially we've been around since 2015 to 2023. Uh, these are just some of the highlights that uh, TC Tech has had over those eight years, and. Um, and then we've got a few really amazing success stories. My favorite in particular is uh, Action Glow. Uh, they actually were just on Shark Tank. Um, we were kind of their sandbox, if you will. Uh, they pitched the TCM type multiple times. Had a lot of feedback from our audience. A lot of the mentorship that took place happened through TCM Tech and lots of we found. And uh, they went on to get financing from Robert, I think. I think it was Robert. Um, and this was very recent. So if you're interested in that story, this is also for those of you who are entrepreneurs in the room and you've got partners and want to know maybe how do you pitch uh, two people on stage at the same time. Uh, these guys did an amazing job. Just type in Action Glow Shark Tank pitch and you'll get to watch their, their presentation. It was really, really something else. Uh, but definitely a few others. And Sample Service actually runs this company. And it's, uh, it's going through another fundraising round right now. And uh, you know, if you're interested in following us, uh, basically it's most of the major social media platforms, just at TC New Tech, um, and then we'll have a website. Without the video, that has a little less contact. That's okay, that's okay, I'm not mad. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna actually hand it over to Brittany to talk a little more about the ecosystem. between Ann Arbor and Traverse City, so it's an honor to be here, and I'm grateful for Michael and for the opportunity to share with you about 20 Fathoms. So what is 20 Fathoms? Well, we are Northern Michigan's home of entrepreneurship, innovation, and technology. So as Chris mentioned, um, the most tangible aspect of the entrepreneurial community in Traverse City is TC New Tech. So that's events like this, um, where you get to actually engage with the entrepreneurs, see their pitches, and from there, we have 20 Fathoms. And 20 Fathoms is the hub of the co-working, the educational space, um, and access to capital resources. Um, and so TC New Tech, 20 Fathoms, Traverse Connect, as Chris mentioned, we all partner together to make sure that entrepreneurs have the resources they need to succeed and grow in Traverse City. So 20 Fathoms envisions a future where every idea gets a fair shot and every entrepreneur has a chance to so we're really thinking about, okay, you know, in, in Ann Arbor, there are so many, so many great resources, including the University of Michigan. Um, and in Traverse City, where we don't have access to the university, and we don't have as, um, as many events, or in the past we didn't. And so 20 Fathoms has really opened up to really show that you can have success and grow in Northern Michigan. Um, and we take pride in connecting the leaders and best in Northern Michigan. Uh, so thinking about who are the current entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs, who are investors and other successful businesses, and how can we bring all of them together in one place. So what are we focusing on this year? One of the key pieces that we have learned from our early stage entrepreneurs in Traverse City is that they want to have more educational resources. So this year, for the first time, we offered a business essentials course in partnership with Northwestern Michigan College. And so this is an opportunity for entrepreneurs to learn the basic business skills to launch their business. Um, we're going to be continuing that programming, including legal essentials going forward, um, and thinking about our, our broader educational partners in the area uh, to help people learn and grow in entrepreneurship. Our other priority is our, our Build to Scale grant. So um, in partnership with the Academic Development Administration, uh, five years ago, we, we received our first grant to really build on the entrepreneurial ecosystem through 20 Fathoms. And going forward, we plan to scale what we're doing in 20 Fathoms, um, both through our educational programming and also thinking about research partnerships. So because we don't currently have a four-year university there, um, we're thinking about how can we bring more research, um, which will then create more innovation and more commercialization opportunities. Um, so that ties into that, that third piece, the research attraction, and something that is growing there. It's been really exciting for me to see universities reaching out to 20 Fathoms and thinking about Northern Michigan.
Michigan has a growth opportunity because it really is a space um, where there's not a current university partner. Uh, one of the most exciting ones you may have heard about is our Freshwater Research and Innovation <coughs> Center. So recently in the news, uh, we learned that we are receiving $15 million in state funding uh, to grow this research center in Northern Michigan. So this is a collaboration of five different partners, 20 Fathoms, Michigan Tech, Northwestern Michigan College, the Discovery Center in here, and Traverse Connect, which is our economic development organization. Um, so this is really exciting for us. It's the first tangible example of bringing higher education research there. Um, we have the key partners here, but honestly, any, any partner is welcome to join. So it's been exciting to see others who are interested in freshwater research as well. Um, so the next steps there, because we now have state funding, we are working on on um, the building design, which if, for those of you familiar uh, with the Trek Street region, um, we have a Leland Hopkins lover where the Discovery Pier is currently. Um, and we're, like, we're looking at the research space and how the different organizations um, will be able to play a role in freshwater research. And to be honest, it's, um, it's a broad concept of freshwater research. Um, uh, the key point is that we're trying to think about what kind of businesses will help innovate towards some of the freshwater challenges. And, and what better place to be than in Lake Michigan, what I would say the most beautiful Great Lake uh, right there. So um, it's, it's exciting that it'll be right, right on Lake Michigan where the research is happening. Another great resource that I encourage all of you to check out is called The Hub. So this is something that we launched this year, and this is our local version of a LinkedIn and event planning site where you can see what's happening in the Traverse City public system. Uh, so we have events like TC New Tech presented on there, uh, the 20 Fathoms Open Houses, uh, SCORE Mentorship Opportunities, and Traverse Connect events. Um, so we have all this in one place, and it's also an opportunity for you to share your business profile um, and talk about what you're, what you're doing, what resources you need, and you can connect directly with investors on the site. Uh, so I do have flyers throughout the room, mainly in the back tables, if you guys are interested in signing up, or you can sign up with the QR code here, of course. Um, I encourage you to create a profile and see what's happening uh, in Charter City. We also have regular events, so we're really encouraging not only the learning, but the connection through our live events. Um, examples of recent events um, we had in partnership with Varnum, one of our sponsors. Um, we had an early stage financing checklist workshop. Um, and we also had a, an event focused on lead methodology with another one of our sponsors, Fred and Advisors. Um, so we're, every month we're offering these different lunch and learns, um, both offered for our broader community and for our members. Um, so if you're interested in, uh, in learning while you're making your next trip to Traverse City, I encourage you to check out our programming. So it'll be listed on our website on the QR code here. And we'll be uh, wrapping that up again in September. We also have regular networking events. So besides TC New Tech, which we go to every first Tuesday of the month, we also host a Women in Tech opportunity. So if by chance you're driving to Traverse City tomorrow, we have one tomorrow evening at Earth and Ales, which is our brewery partner. We also have one on August 16th. Uh, and our next open house is actually next week. Um, this is a great way for you to tour the space, see what kind of programming we have, um, enjoy our, uh, our local uh, culture kombucha, Earth and Ales beer, Road to State Wine, to really highlight our, our local uh, our businesses there. Uh, so that's July 27th at 4.30, and then we have one uh, again in August uh, on the 31st. So these are every month, usually the last Thursday of the month. And if you're interested in learning more, we do have a monthly newsletter, so I encourage you to sign up here. We have a website listed there, and um, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, in the back there, there's, like I mentioned, there are a few flyers, um, more about our membership, some of the impact we've had over the past five years as a nonprofit in Northern Michigan. Um, we also have a great mug club opportunity as another way to engage with us. Thank you again, and I think now we're opening up for questions. Chris is going to come back. Any questions for our group from Traverse City? First, I want to say that Traverse City has always been entrepreneurial. Because I remember when the Chateau Grand Traverse was out there on the peninsula, and they basically reinvented Michigan agritourism. And that's just incredible. 
And then there's Michael Moore. He's worth, what, $400 million? <laughs> he basically reshaped all of Traverse City and put this incredible film festival there. So kudos, you're building on gold. But I really want to know, uh, the Milkins, you know, they had a department store. I'm talking about the family of Governor Milliken. And I was just wondering if you could tell me where they are in this ecosystem because, you know, they were kind of doing things like this back about 20 years. So are they at the heart of 20 Fathoms? I, I mean, yeah, they moved out of town. Where are the Milkins? That, that's a good question. So I think to your point on entrepreneurship, you're right that the entrepreneurial spirit has always been there. But what has been lacking is the connection between the entrepreneurs or the formalized connection. A lot of it was informal, and we have great examples like you mentioned of Chateau Grand Travers in, in the milking business. Um, but a lot of these success stories were more independent. And if they were getting together, it wasn't a public event where anyone could go. Um, so what we're doing with 20 Fathoms and with TCU Tech is creating more public opportunities where anyone can attend and more accessible. Um, and as far as Milliken's engagement with 20 Fathoms, as far as I know, there really hasn't been. So thank you for a great idea. Get them up. Absolutely. Thank you. Other questions? So answer this question for, for me, for those there. Um, I'm a startup. I come out of Southeast Michigan. I come up to Traverse City, it seems like cool. What's, what's the attraction to me spending more time in Traverse City? Uh, I can speak to the initial bit, and then I can speak to the later stages. Um, you know, first of all, Traverse City is beautiful. It's a, it's a great place to live. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity there from the perspective of quality of life. Um, so that's definitely a big draw for a lot of people. Um, and then, of course, you know, as you enter the ecosystem, there has now become a fairly robust uh, support system for those startups um, that's growing every day. Absolutely. So I can act on the lifestyle. That's absolutely what drew, drew me to Traverse City and outside every day, all four seasons, and I have one, multiple new hobbies. Um, so that's one aspect. Um, the other key draw, I would say, is that sense of connection and access to leaders and experts in the community. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, and to your point of the video, there was also a video that 20 Fathoms has uh, with the Center on Rural Innovation. And really what it highlights is how when you're in Traverse City, people are genuinely trying to help you succeed. Um, and that's something that has really inspired me and throughout my career, both you know, in the corporate worlds prior to 20 Fathoms and now in the nonprofit world. Um, people want you to succeed. They are going to connect you. Uh, between events at TC News after meeting key leaders in the community who are influencing major businesses in our area, uh, to 20 Fathoms where you can learn and grow. That sense of community and connection and people actually know your name and want to help you is there. And, and there's a sense of humility too. That's another thing I'd add. Um, the people who are successful are often humble there and they want to help you succeed as well. They want to pay it forward. Um, so for me personally, that is what has drawn me to Charm City, and I definitely say come, come be part of it. Any other? All right, I have one more too. Um, yeah. <laughs> is can you talk a little bit more about Northern Michigan Angels and Boomerang? Uh, for those who are small businesses and are going to be presenting here today, I think all of them are looking for money. Um, any small business, any startup is looking for the most part is looking for money. Can you talk about the financial uh, investment opportunity that exists in Traverse City? So, uh, at least from our perspective, what we've seen is that you know, TCU Tech is a great way to get in front of those people because they're at the event. Uh, they are also headquartered out of 20 Fathoms. So again, this speaks to that ecosystem of we've set it up in a way that those goals are attainable when you become part of that ecosystem because you are literally rubbing shoulders with those people. Um, I can tell you that oh, I met well. Casey Carwell oh, well. my very at pitch. my very first pitch, pitch that, that I didn't even know was a pitch. He was in the room. Uh, he was in the room. It was about 10 investors, and he was in the back watching, and I was just planning on my business, and he came up to me and handed me a card after, and I wasn't there for that. And so that was a very organic thing. 
Front Street in the water to like the big peninsulas, drive a little bit south, and you will, to Chris's point, you end up like an entirely different little cathedral in the middle of Detroit um, with all as much as, uh, much as going on here. So, um, all right, thank you guys very much for giving us an overview of Traverse City. I would highly, highly recommend. When is the next? So it'll be August, August 1st, is the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, and I would highly recommend getting up there. I will say the trick of the trade, as I told Brittany, is you go up after Memorial Day, or after Labor Day, or before Memorial Day, the Indigo Hotel is right there, it's like 130 bucks. You go up anytime between, it's like 350 bucks. So go up in the fall or the winter or the early spring, and it's I mean, it's gorgeous space, it's got a rooftop patio and the whole thing. Uh, that's, uh, that's where we stay when we go up. So a little bit of the four companies here tonight. Um, I don't think they know which order they're going in. Uh, I kind of did a little Russian roulette here and just kind of, I don't actually know who's next I have to build, uh, just because I didn't look at the presentation before I did it. But uh, joining us first, they've got a little demo up here. They're gonna come up uh, is Bill Schofield of Apton Bill. This is a takeaway that I can email to you after this because I do want you to be able to read it at your leisure. The point that I want to make is at the bottom of the screen right now, which is the problem and the market demand of which we are addressing with our product, which is shortage of affordable housing across the U.S., not just the U.S., excuse me, not just Michigan, but across the U.S. and our global market. But also, it's not just square footage for affordable housing, it's also square footage for humanitarian outlet and relief programs, homeless, disaster relief, um, refugees, war, you name it, shelters needed, we provide it with an easy solution. Product development has taken us over the past two years from our first systems, which we call our 1.0s, all the way through our current structure ready 2.1 system, which is now ready for production and ready to move into uh, first deliveries in the next approximately three to four months from right now. 
So what does the solution look like? I presented to you two problems. And those two problems though, what is unique about our system is we can hit both targets with one core technology. The first portion of it is the affordable housing solution, which utilizes our structure ready system. This build system allows you to go from ADU, tiny home markets, all the way through your traditional 1,200 square foot builds for your uh, residential type of needs. So whether small or large, we have you covered. But as I noted, the target is twofold. We also have the humanitarian need across the globe, not just even in the US. Right now, we have two extensions of, the early, of our early product extension in the disaster relief humanitarian space, as well as the outdoor living experience. We call it the outdoor enthusiast. These two groups have organically found us, or the first one where we started at, the other group found us organically, being in Michigan, and surrounded by hunters and fishermen everywhere, they found us and said, that, my gosh, Bill, that would make a phenomenal opportunity for hunting blinds, cabins, pop-up systems, etc." But the question then is, let we'll go back here, why this technology? The technology, which you'll see here in a minute, is simple. It allows anybody, anywhere in the world, with no tools, no construction experience, no nails, no, you name it, no hardware, you will put this structure together in a matter of minutes, up to a couple of hours, depending on the size of the structure. And when that structure is standing, you have wind loads over 130 miles an hour, you have snow loads through northern Michigan, and you have the ability to take it down, transport it, and put it up hundreds of times over and over and over. If you don't like the size? Call us, order some more panels, be modular. You just change your system to something new in a whole new configuration as simple as a Lego. Our pipeline readiness has us all the way down right now to our assembly operations are defined and ready to go. The company is set, the actions are complete, and right now, as I said, we are moving into production, and that's why I'm here today, to get the awareness of the company and let you know where we stand and get the product out to the people. Manufacturing is defined, Melvindale, Michigan is where we're located. Again, operations are ready to be turned on. Our pipeline for sales stretches from Michigan to Hawaii, to Puerto Rico, to the Midwest, you name it. We're gaining the awareness, we're gaining the traction. Our Q3 and Q4 are looking very positive as we move into the rest of this year. And 24 is looking phenomenal. We already have conversations underway with Japan, Australia, Egypt, Europe. They have come to us, they have visited us, they've reviewed the technology, they've identified the need, and we are pursuing the conversations with them because they see where it can fit into their needs in their regions of the world, including the defense industry. At the end of the day, our impact, it, it impacts not just the person, it's the company as well. The companies that use our product, the businesses that utilize our product, be it consumer, be it government, be it private, they all gain something from it that's gonna benefit them as part of their ecosystem. So with it, we're not just this niche that fits into a corner of somebody's area, but it allows organizations, groups, and people to expand it further into the social impact that the product was originally designed for. Our product, up against some of the big hitters that are out there today, we absolutely surpass the competition. Our operating team, we have a phenomenal board of directors, as well as our leadership team comes from primarily over 30 years of experience across the board from Lear, American Express, Ford Motor, Tesla, Rivian, etc. where we bring the team in, so we have the understanding of manufacturing, product development, and getting the product to the people. Our sales curves, this actually we were very, very careful on, we developed it. Optimistic, yes, but incredibly feasible. We developed this with some of the top business leaders in the industries from construction, development, etc. So when we put these numbers in front of you, we do it with the confidence behind how we generated these forecasts. Develop. Oh. 
that's that's, that's, five, that's, that's five minutes. Yeah. Okay. So just the last slide I'll show here is afterwards I can go into more detail with everybody, or actually we can turn this into the Q and A portion of it. Of why am I here today as well? It's not just awareness. It's also because as we move into this uh, production readiness round, we are also looking at capital investment, a two million dollar convertible note round, and I'll tell you what, we open it up to the floor for Q and A. Okay. Questions. Uh, just curious, so uh, they're pre-assembled in a, in a warehouse, uh, in a closed environment, um, I'm assuming, and then shipped to the sites? The so, two products, absolutely. So when you look at the humanitarian disaster relief, our conversations right now with Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands and uh, Dominican Republic, that question was, how do we get our product to them? How is it shipped, et cetera? Flat packed. Absolutely, doors and windows are already in place. Flat packed there, when they get it on site, it's literally as simple as standing off in place, snapping them together, and it's usable in a matter of minutes. And it's rigid, insulated, and durable. Can I ask a follow-up? Um, Please. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> just curious, so, so are they pre-wired for technology? Uh, so these facilities, are they designed for immediate shelter or long-term? Well, that's the beauty of how the system is derived now. It started with just temporary, let's get people covered. Let's get them under, instead of a tarp or a tent, right. let's get people underneath something more humane, something that's more sustainable for a family unit to operate, maybe for two months, two, sometimes two years. So what happens, these units started as just that, quick, temporary, in a matter of minutes, your family is covered, you're safe. But as we worked with different organizations, we started to find that there was a need for power. There was a need for some more hab habitable type of uh, accessories that, to survive. So we incorporated power into our system. We now have a power panel that comes already pre-wired, snaps in place, put the generator up to it, you have power. AC, heat, and enough electricity to run a small laptop, uh, hot plate, uh, charge your phone, whatever it might be. Hand first. <laughs> uh, the traditional housing construction uh, has a lot of rigidity to it, and when you try and move something like that onto, you've got there, you've got a trailer, right? Um, you lose a lot of uh, long-term durability. So, for example, you hammer a nail in, and the rattling makes it come out. Um, and you said something about how the wind could handle this, but. I wonder what kinds of things and concerns I'm gonna to have to worry about if I purchase one of these for say a medium length of period of time that I'm planning to use it. How much do I need to worry about over time? The, you know, you get, you get an idea thing. How much do I have to worry that the same thing is gonna happen here? Your whole space just it's kind a, of collapsing on top of you while sleeping. That's a very fair question. And <laughs> I, I'm actually glad you asked it because during the development, myself, I'm a licensed builder as well, structural engineering, Michigan Tech University, so I'm glad to see MTU up on the screen earlier. Um, when this was developed, it was developed with all the IBC codes around it. So we developed the system, not just in our, say, our own warehouse without questions of other experts. We developed it with some of the top builders, developers, and structural engineers and architects throughout Michigan and the area to ensure that when it is up, that will stand 100 years, and you'll never have, to, never have to worry about that nail popping out or anything coming down on you. This is built to an IBC code. This is built so that no matter what you throw at it, it will stand next to your house, next to a neighbor's house, as well as anybody else's on the block because of the way it was designed. Now, you brought up a trailer real quick. I'm gonna make one quick note on that. The outdoor enthusiast market, this is primarily the campgrounds. This is your KOAs, these are your, um, your getaways. We actually have the first orders going out to the KOA campgrounds here in Michigan. And those are on the trailers, but when they get there, those are primarily gonna be stationary. We build them, we, these are the only models that we build in-house that we provide a finished unit for. Tiny homes and trailerable, excuse me, trailerable type of units for like the campgrounds. Those units will go to a site, they'll be leveled, they'll be set, they'll be plugged in, 
and they're operational in a matter of half a day. Now, if you're looking for the market of, hey, I want to move my house all around though continuously, we can absolutely work with our structural engineers and develop a system that would allow that dynamic movement continuously. But our first markets are the outdoor enthusiasts that are the plug and play. We build it, we ship it, they level it, they plug it, they rent it. The market for the renting of the Airbnbs, KOAs, campgrounds is through the roof right now. So that's where that one's geared for. The other permanent structures, those are built on site. They will be there for the next 100 years and they will meet every code that you require. Um, again, our requirements have been reviewed by builders, developers, structural engineers across the country that have literally come in and worked with us on the development of the product. All right, one That's an excellent two, question. Yeah, one, maybe two more. Please. Um, I'm rep representing here a Ukrainian community, and uh, I'm deeply involved in their refugees' health and other things. And uh, you know, wars happen in Ukraine, and uh, I saw one of the start was on actually on Ukrainian territory. I don't know if this happened, but, it is. but I know, uh, and I'm going to be probably involved in a in a program of rebuilding Ukraine, Ukrainian communities in Ukraine and houses after the war. Yes. It's going to happen you know, soon. Are you going to be able to, if I'm going to connect it to the, some government programs, because the whole world is going to rebuild the Ukrainian you know, houses, are you going to be able to build the factory actually in Ukraine and help them with the government program to rebuild the houses? That is an excellent question. I'm glad you brought that one up as well. The, the visits that we've had from across the globe of the various regions have been that exact question. Uh, we know we will not ship the product from Detroit, Michigan, all the way across to Ukraine. The question was, how do we help Ukraine? Ukraine is going to have to be built here very shortly, and they're going to have to build in mass. And it has to be reliable, durable, quality. Our system has been developed specifically from the start to be easy to ramp up in a, another country. It's been made so it can be easily, with low CAFX, brought on board. And you can start developing these systems for under a million dollars, you have a full factory up and running and developing the system out the door. So we did it purposely for that reason. Oh, uh, yes? Can you show how easily the walls stack together? Um, yeah, th this is basically part of the core technology right here. Our system is, our connect, our patents, we hold multiple patents right now, both domestically and internationally. Our corner system, our connector systems tie in with our walls. Then we have our top tracks that start to bind it all together. And finally, as your roof goes on, it starts to lock it all in place. But the, the ability for international expansion has 100% been identified right from the beginning in our business model to allow companies, or excuse me, countries such as Ukraine to be able to rapidly set up a factory that can start producing this product. Literally, you can get the company up and running over there in about a five month window and you're able to start producing. Okay. All right. I'm Ian Vertigan, and I'm one of the founders of Biohack Spot, which is a full-service parking platform for colleges. And I initially noticed a problem when I got to school here at Michigan. Uh, there were a lot of students that were looking for parking, both online and offline. Just I noticed a lot of people in the Facebook groups. And I also noticed people in these groups that were selling parking spots, which I thought was Genius concept, if you're not using the space, you may as well make some money off of it. So, uh, co -founder, my co-founder Jacob and I, we were friends in the dorms, and 
we noticed this problem kind of existed nationally and we realized, hey, let's, we, gotta, we should take advantage of this. So our solution was to build up this peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, kind of like an Airbnb for parking. We built up a mobile app and a web app and all we had to do was wait for the sales to start rolling in. The hardest decision ahead of us was were we gonna get a yacht or a jet with the proceeds? <laughs> that all being said, demand heavily outweighed supply of parking spots, and we realized that we had to be more than just a peer-to-peer -peer platform. So we started going over to lot owners and property managers who we realized are just as frantic when it comes to parking. It's difficult for students to find their parking lots in properties where you'll sometimes have to just like call the phone number on a sign or it'll be listed on like Craigslist or Facebook. So they're difficult to find. Once they do find the spot, it's a time consuming process. You gotta go through all the paperwork, arrange payments. Um, and ultimately this results in a ton of underutilized space and missed sales for these landlords, property managers on college campuses. So the business model is simple and it's very attractive to landlords because it doesn't cost them any money to list the spots. Um, we just take a cut out of commission, so we only make money when they make money. And then also the buyer of the spot take, uh, pays a fee. So uh, you might be thinking there are other parking apps in the space. Uh, we don't really consider ourselves to have any direct competitors at the moment. Um, there, are, there are competitors, but we've mostly observed that they're in the hourly parking space in larger cities. and. We do more so monthly parking in college town, like some of that long-term parking for students. And um, that all being said though, there is a company called Float that does that did do monthly parking for college students. And they were recently acquired by a company called Spacer, which leads us to believe that they may be aiming to enter the space. That all being said, we believe ourselves to be a superior platform because we have a lot more customization and we're more than just a listing platform. We've evolved over the years to become a more full service parking management software, which I'll get into now. So we've been, uh, we've been developing uh, our full service platform through the, uh, the Sci Accelerator at the moment. Um, so like we've been working on our dashboard. You can easily view all the availability, all the occupancy of all of your parking lots real time. Uh, we've actually secured a lot of uh, new partnerships recently and um, so this is, this is uh, some of what our platform looks like. Um, we've, so we're more than just an idea. It's, we've had around 1,300 users and around $70,000 in transactions and 300 customers at the University of Michigan. And that actually was just using our peer-to-peer -peer model. Um, so that has been before we started switching over to going over to the property managers and law owners. It's a lot easier to get customers when you're not going door to door asking people if they have parking. Um, we go like now call a property manager and they're like, yeah, I got 100 spots. So uh, as I mentioned, we're growing to other schools. Uh, we're at Michigan now, we're aiming to go to Big Ten schools because um, there's also room for the football parking. So, you know, people that hold up the cardboard signs, like $20 for my parking spot, where you go any game day? There are thousands of those people around the stadium that are selling parking, so we want to turn that whole process digital so people can make reservations in advance. And for sellers, they have their game day bag, they're not stuck outside holding a sign all day. Uh, so the, we've also uh, gotten a lot of word out at some of the other schools uh, through just ambassadors and paid uh, sales commissions reps. Uh, so this is some of the uh, ambassadors at Penn State. We've also secured some partnerships with property managers that have listed their spots. So we believe we're poised for growth and uh, we're on a strong track to become the parking software for colleges. Questions for Ian. Yep. Uh, how do you track who's in what spot? So if I've got a lot, it's got 100 spaces and I put each of those individually up for sale, is that how it works? Uh, so you just, you can just list uh, 100 100 spots, and this is a feature that actually, one of, the, one of the reasons why we're differentiated from other platforms, we have like a smart occupancy. So basically, if uh, like our, our platform will optimize to make sure you get the maximum amounts of um, 
occupancy for your lot. But yes, um, a so user. It's not for for lot. It's for, it's for lots, um, right? Like for unnumbered spaces. But we are planning on adding the ability to have numbered spaces. We typically advise against it because if the spaces are unnumbered, you have a lot better chance of maximizing your occupancy. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned you had seventy thousand dollars in revenue. Do you know what your that's my question? Uh, what your projections for is it this year or the next? Yeah, projections for this year, uh, we we would like around like a million dollars per school in revenue. So um, again, like. At the end of the day, that's revenue. We count revenue as like if a spot sold for a thousand dollars for the year, like the majority of that's going to the owner of the parking spot, and if we have like our ten percent cut, we get a uh, hundred dollars from that. So are you currently from a profitability standpoint at seven thousand? Around there, it's it's a little bit less because for the first year or so, we were waiving the fees that we have, um, so. We were not. Uh, we were doing some promotions just because we need people to like trust our platform, prove that we're a valuable service. Yep. Uh, just curious. Uh, platforms like Spot Hero. Mm -hmm. um, yep. How do you differentiate? I think you may have already answered that. Yeah, for sure. So um, one of the things is like a lot of them are like hourly. Some of them do focus on monthly parking, um, but even like Spot Hero, which started in Chicago, like. They're also not in college towns. Like they're not even in Northwestern, which is like right, pretty close. So um, us being more monthly, long-term park, uh, uh, sorry, more monthly, long-term parking focused, and um, being college focused is kind of a big differentiator. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. So let's say uh, someone reserves a spot for three hours, but then they end up leaving two hours early. How does it go about? Uh, does it go about showing that spot available through the GPS of the? Yeah, sure. Um, so that's a good point. We haven't done hourly yet, um, so that's something that we haven't yet looked into. But I mean, we have explored like camera tracking, uh, like people going in and out, and that also is something that can be used for detecting violators as well, like license plate scanning. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like, did a couple of years ago went to school, but they used to use physical parking passes. Yeah. Like, I know in my school and then my brother's school and stuff like that. Do you guys have a way to deal with that? Yeah, so for physical parking passes, a lot of that, so we're, we're the management platform. We're not the ones that are, facil like, we facilitate the transactions and the listing and we advertise the spots. But ultimately, it's up to the property manager and the renter of the spot to arrange, um, that parking pass. So, like, um, if it's a parking pass, if it's uh, sometimes it's like a transponder to get in and out of the garage. That's all facilitated outside of the app um, between between the two in the transaction. One more question. Yep. I think you kind of hit on this. The thing about parking is an unauthorized parker can take a spot, and then you have an enforcement issue. And I'm just wondering how your platform handles it because there's actually some money in that because if you boot or if you tow you know there's a cash stream there that buy my spot might want to take advantage of yeah at the moment i mean we've talked to towing companies but more so as a uh, like hey do you guys happen to know any property managers that would find buy my spot useful um but yeah, I mean, we've definitely we've definitely considered in the past like we're basically referring them customers at that point, like because there's the there's the money that they, they make from the towing. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something um, that that we could make money off of as an additional stream in the future. Mm -hmm. But uh, All right. can I say one more thing? Sure. Yeah. So actually, regarding that. Um, Mentioned property managers. Uh, I didn't do this during the pitch, but if anyone happens to know property managers that rent out parking, um, or even if you guys live like near the stadium, like you can sell your parking on Buy My Spot, like during the football season. Um, and also, we're we're uh, wanting to do some fundraising pretty soon, but probably everyone is. Yeah. So. Great job.
All right, uh, Chris from G Beats uh, coming up here, and uh, he's got a, his last slide is a video, and if the technology fails, it's actually on him. Uh, so, right? Is that true? You, you did some beforehand. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, Chris. Come on. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hart. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of GB. Uh, super pumped to be here today. And a uh, big thank you to Michael for uh, giving us the opportunity to present. All right, so what I'm gonna talk about today with GB is gonna be in the context of a YouTube workout. Here we have Pamela Reef. Uh, she's a popular fitness uh, YouTube creator with over nine and a half million subscribers. Uh, so I'm going to do this. We're going to walk through a scenario. So I'm going to work out to Pamela Reef. I'm going to have my Apple Watch, and somebody's actually calling me on my Apple Watch. I'm going to get snow to that. So here I have uh, this. I would have the video, and then on my Apple Watch, I'm going to go in and say start workout, start the video. Great. I'm going to do my workout. But here's the problem. As I'm working out and trying to follow along with Pamela, I have to keep looking at my Apple Watch to see what heart zone and range I'm in. And every time I have to look down, and then if I want to look at the heart rate zone, I have to flip to another screen. That whole time, my attention is being directed not on the screen, but on my watch. So with GB, how do we address this problem? Well, we seamlessly get the data from your Apple Watch, and from any smartwatch for that matter, uh, and create a live overlay of that data in real time on any workout that you're doing on YouTube. So it makes it really simple. This is probably the most simple presentation that we have here today. <laughs> so YouTube. It probably wouldn't be a surprise to anyone to know that YouTube is a popular destination for people that are looking to work out. We estimate that there are between 60 to 100 million people that work out to YouTube content every month. And the diversity of content on YouTube is unmatched. I mean, as an example, say you have diabetes and you're looking for workouts that are appropriate for somebody with diabetes. There's an, there are many channels out there, one in particular uh, by Caroline Jordan that has 450,000 subscribers where she's just producing content for folks that have diabetes to work out to. So if there's something you're looking at, to work, to work out to on YouTube, it's gonna be there. So with that, I'm gonna switch, uh, switch down to a live demo and show you GB in action. Okay, well, so let me set this up. So here I am, my YouTube.com. Uh, we have uh, Heather Robertson up here today. We have the GB browser extension installed, and I have GB on my Apple Watch. I'm going to start the workout. And what, what I'll receive here in just a second, I received a push notification on my Apple Watch. I'm gonna hit join the workout. We'll go full screen here so you can see. So now the data is coming from my Apple Watch. This is my heart rate in real time. And by the way, this works on, we have a continue work on the browser, we'll work on mobile and smart TVs. So now I can start doing some jumping jacks. Let's, uh, let's, let's advance it to the jumping jacks. <laughs> All right, we're not going to do, uh, here we go. Okay, so as you see here, I'll start doing some jumping jacks. And my heart rate's going to go up here in a second. See it's increasing. Normally I'd be looking at the screen, right? Um, yeah, so you get the idea. So the data is coming right from my Apple Watch, coming here live. Uh, we're going to be rolling this out uh, in September. We're working with several YouTube creators, uh, many that have millions of followers and subscribers. Tell us about your pricing model. Uh, how do you? Yeah, so that's a great question. So um, we're going to make it free and with a, a sponsor-supported model, and then people that don't want to have the sponsor-supported aspects of it, they'll be added, but they'll be tastefully done. Um, they can upgrade to a paid subscription. But we're talking like 
an annual subscription for like $19. So really low cost, make it highly available to everybody. But initially it'll, it'll all be free. Tell us about who you're targeting. How do you reach the workout participants? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're working with a lot of creators. Like for instance here, here's Heather Robertson. She has uh, 2.3 million subscribers. She produces the video on her channel. She tells everybody about it. And working with creators, we don't have to work with creators, but we want to work with creators. They're going to get back, uh, you know, how, or right now they get views, right? With the GB to actually get back cohorts and in in the cardio response to each video. So then they can actually do call outs, say in certain zones they want to get people into. Um, so they're going to get additional data that they don't get today. Right. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, so it's so sync with the YouTube only at the moment, right? Well, you can work, you can work well, with any video. We just happen to show YouTube because it's the most popular. Right. But the, I'm playing golf, for example. Yes. And somebody can play tennis and others. And I'm interested in how much calories I spend, how to beat that kind of thing. So just just idea, right? So if you integrate with us, like glass or some other thing, you know? Oh, maybe that's more universal, you know? Yeah, so we start with the smart wash, but we'll actually be able to get data from treadmills and all that as well. And do this live, do the live overlay of data. And it's really about connecting up here, you know, here are all these folks exercising today on YouTube, um, working with the creators. The creator, like going to market, is just partnering with creators. And it, we figure we can get a reach of like 60 million people partnering with creators. Will you, will you, I mean, besides data, will you have to pay the creators? Yeah, so we're going to have, we have like economic alignment, so when we make money, they make money. And then we have, we've already had some creators come back and say, hey, I have a calendar. Can you have it so the calendar, like I have a workout program, so it just checks it off for them and automates that? And we're like, absolutely. So we're going to, I think we're just going to really see how, we're going to see uh, YouTube evolving, work, working with creators as this data is coming back to them. Other questions? Are you guys going to be This is going to be a lot Be uh, completely opt in, privacy compliant, and uh, it'll be all <laughs> anonymous. So it'll be like cohorts of like, here's a 50 year old. Yeah, but we would definitely very, very cognizant of making sure it's all privacy compliant and only opt in. Yes. Do you have any creators that want to post their data on the video? Yeah, I mean, they're, it's so wild when we start talking to creators, they're like, they come up with all these great ideas and and so we have about 100 different creators uh, on our, our list that we're targeting right now. And we've spoken to about 25 of them, and they've already come back with like phenomenal ideas. Once we show them this, and the one thing I don't show today, but we're, we're in the process of doing, is we actually use machine vision to index the creator's motion, and then we can compare it to what the watch is experiencing and come back with a motion score in addition to the heart rate. So we're going to have more sensor data that we're going to be fusing together. And here's the other thing I didn't really talk about. Say you're, um, you know, like me, I'm 56 year old. I come to YouTube and I'm like, recommend a workout for me. You know, you kind of have my profile. We'll be able to come back and offer personalized workouts that are relevant to you because we'll have this data. Because right now YouTube is very much hit driven, like show me the popular of this or popular of that. It may not be relevant to me. But now with, the, with, your person, with that data behind the scenes, we're gonna be able to recommend videos that are relevant to you, to you, you know, to everyone. Yes. Any other questions? I love, an I love answering questions. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, well, thank you to our four presenters and to our special guest, Trevor City, here today. Another round of applause for everybody that was here. So this is the part of the program where if you guys, it's community announcement time, so if you guys have something 
uh, you're a developer and you're looking for a job, you're an investor, well, if you're an investor, just buy one of the four presenting companies. <laughs> um, but if you're someone who just would like to share something, you've got a networking event, uh, you've got something coming up, um, you are welcome to come up. It's your free moment. If you are an advertiser, you're okay, come on up and just be like, hey, I'm just gonna advertise my business for, for 30 seconds here. So um, you're welcome to come on up and join us. If there's nobody, um, does anybody have a community announcement? I have a question. Sure. What is Google Pop Star Pop event right now going on at the same time? Mm -hmm. How does it happen? So there's two events going on at the same time right now. NEF is going on right now. NEF is normally uh, the on a Thursday. Um, NEF is going on today because starting, I believe, on Thursday uh, is the beginning of the Ann Arbor Art Fair. Um, and the Ann Arbor Art Fair, if you've never been in Ann Arbor, the Art Fair essentially takes over the entire city uh, and makes traffic uh, impossible, makes parking impossible, um, and State Street, Main Street, South University, um, East William, Liberty, everything is the Art Fair. Uh, so if you've never been, I highly encourage you to go. It's like walking through uh, the Met um, here in downtown Ann Arbor. There's deals to be had. Um, I always come home with a piece of art that my wife immediately looks at and says, we're not hanging this. Um, so, which is actually a true story. Um, I wish it wasn't. We apparently, I apparently do not have good taste, according to my wife, but I picked her, so it could have been that bad. But, um, yeah, so anyway, that's why there's two events going on at the same time this week. Normally we're Tuesday, and they are Thursday nights. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, we'll be back the third Tuesday of the month for August. I think it's August 18th, but I'm not 100% certain. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, come on over. Nice. Uh, hey, I'm Brian. I'm the CEO of Startup Call Cross Brand. Um, we are at Tech First Skill Trades. Um, pretty straightforward enterprise SaaS sales model. Uh, and I've got our first like five or six proper enterprise customers in New York and looking at this uh, scale sales. So. Done that right. Can you hear okay? How about now? Is that better? Uh, got our first five or so enterprise SaaS customers on the door. Looking to scale sales. Um, if you've got enterprise SaaS experience, we'd love to talk. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. I think we're going to be presenting next month, too. Uh, so you'll learn more about uh, cross Um As I said, a lot of great events coming up. Check out the Amber Spark website. Check out Michigan Founders Fund website, um, LinkedIn. Uh, there's a gentleman named Pete Martin who works for Michigan Founders Fund. He's posting every single week. He's posting all the events that are going on um, throughout uh, Southeast Michigan and beyond. Uh, so I would recommend uh, those those to you guys. But uh, yes, Sean. Uh, I'm just going to recommend uh, August first. Uh, Traverse City is a great place to visit on August first. We'll have the TCB tech. Absolutely, and there, if you like wine, and who doesn't, um, <laughs> the winery scene is, I mean, my wife and I go up there every single year, the winery scene is really, really good. Highly recommend Bonbo, that's probably our favorite on Old Mission Peninsula, um, but whatever your palate is, there is a winery for you. Uh, there's also, um, there's a number of uh, distilleries up there, um, Mammoth Distillery, Traverse City Distillery, and is there a third one? Grand Traverse. Grand Traverse is up there. It, it really is a great place to, to visit, and we're so excited to have our group here. We're going to reach out to Grand Rapids uh, to come and present A2 New Tech. We're going to reach out to Detroit to come and present A2 New Tech and our friends in Lansing. Uh, and one other thing, if you guys have a business, if you'd like to present at some point at A2 New Tech, please just come up to me. Or if you know someone, hey, you know, I have a friend who uh, wants to get some experience. Um, please come up to me and let me know when we're done. If there's no more announcements, I will dismiss you guys like you're in my class. Um, have a great rest of your night. Uh, <laughs>